fall off just a little bit. Yeah, this good. is more important. Okay. About, it ain't about my concern. This is about my um, taking somebody's life. Did you move at all during any of this? Um, when I first did it, um, no, 10 minutes later, I knew he was dead because he wasn't moving. And this is all premeditated because it's not like I did it then. We like to we like to bring DJ home, okay? So okay. we're going to try to find him where you describe. Okay. Um, I'd like to have another conversation with you. You're going to find him there. Okay. Good. <laughs> okay. Believe me. Hey family, welcome back to another video. If you're new here, hi, I'm Autism Mom, and on this channel, we talk about autism and everything in between. Today's video is about Darnell Taylor, and we're doing another fair use reaction video. So let me read this to you. This story is about 48-year-old Pammy May of Franklin County, Ohio. She has been arrested and charged with the murder of five-year-old Darnell Taylor. Pammy and her husband have been Darnell's legal guardian since at least May of 2023. Pammy confessed to the detectives that she became angry with Darnell after finding him eating snacks in his bed. Hours later, she went into his room and suffocated him with a trash bag. Later that night, she placed his body into a sewage drain where he was found two days later. We're still looking for your son and hoping that he's alive. And want to know if you could help us maybe give us a better location if we showed you a map. I would have told you where he was. If we showed you a map, would that help? He, he, he's on East Brooks and Marshawn in a manhole. Can Marsdale? you look at the map? Oh, Marsdale. I'm sorry. Sorry, I don't know. Um, they put CT scans in Okay. Yeah, this is more important. Okay. About, it ain't about my concern. This is about my um, taking somebody's life. Did you move at all during any of this? Um, when I first did it, um, no, 10 minutes later, I knew he was dead because he wasn't moving. And this is all premeditated. Because it's not like I did it then. We like to we like to bring DJ home, okay? So okay. we're going to try to find him where you describe. Okay. Um, I'd like to have another conversation with you. You're going to find him there. Okay. Good. Okay. Believe me. I wasn't mean an evil one, obviously. No, you're just having a bad time. No, that's never a bad time to take nobody's life. So anyone that's seen that video, you can tell Pammy is not that tightly winded up there. Something is a little loose. Now, I want to take you to Pammy's bond hearing and see what her reaction is. If you look at Pammy, you can tell something is not right. Let's go to the bond hearing. Are you Pammy May? Yes. Um, yes. All right. Thank you. Charges here are murder and a a uh, companion case of kidnapping F1 and, and endangering children F3. Counsel. Uh, thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Tyler McCoy on behalf of uh, Franklin County Supreme Court number 0098729. As for uh, Ms. May's record, she has no identifiable record. Um, it appears that we uh, tried to make contact with uh, her husband, Mr. May, but uh, have not received any um, response back. Um, as for um, Amy's loss factors, uh, she has uh, mental health issues, bipolar and schizophrenia, um, as well as possessive or controlling behavior in the past. Um, as for the facts, on um, February 14, 2024, there was a report of a missing child. Uh, a reporting person stated that he is the foster parent of the child and telephoned the police after being advised disturbing information from his wife, Pammy May. She stated that she had something serious to tell him, and she stated that um, DT was not there, which prompted Mr. May to call the police. Um, while on the phone with the police, Pammy said that she had a plan for him, referring to DT, and um, an Amber Alert was issued. It was determined that the defendant, who was the legal custodian of DT, Pammy May, uh, suffocated the minor um, five-year-old victim to death while inside the residence. The defendant then fled the jurisdiction and was later arrested in Cleveland. During questioning, the defendant admitted to killing the victim and disposing of the body in a sewer in Columbus, Ohio. 
Days after the murder, the minor victim's body was recovered from a sewage drain in Columbus, Ohio. Um, the state is requesting um, a high bond uh, based on the severity of the offense at issue, uh, the young age of the victim, relationship with the parties, public safety concerns, as well as the risk of flight, as shown by her flight prior to her capture in Cleveland. The state is seeking a bond in excess of $2 million. No future acts or threats of violence, no weapons, no alcohol or drugs, and no contact with any of the uh, witnesses, Your Honor. All right, thank you. Thanks, Your Honor. Counsel. Thank you, Your Honor. Sarah Zonstein, 0089158, on behalf of Ms. May. Um, Your Honor, I would just ask for a modest bond in both cases in front of you. All right, thank you. On the kidnapping, it's been, going to be one million cash surety. <laughs> on the murder, it's going to be three million cash surety. Conditions of bond, Ms. May. No odor, consumption, or possession of any alcohol or drugs of abuse. No possession of any firearms or other weapons. No further acts of violence or threats of violence against anyone. Stay away from any of the witnesses. All right? No contact by mail, by email, by telephone, text, in person, third party, and social media. March 1st. March 1st is your prelim date, ma'am. Thank you. Sure. I'll sit down here. So, Pammy was charged with a whole slew of things. And while already starting her sentence, she appealed by asking that she can, if she can go to a facility where she can get help for her bipolar disorder and schizophrenia because where she was at, she wasn't getting the help she need. And this is how that hearing went. By Sam Shemansky. And he told us after this hearing that she will, is not getting the help she needs in a county jail. Now, at May's last hearing, a Franklin County prosecutor said that she had mental health issues, including bipolar disorder and schizophrenia. Police charge May with aggravated murder, tampering with evidence, and gross abuse of a corpse. Now, on February 14th, an Amber Alert was issued for five-year-old Darnell Taylor. Pammy May's husband called 911 saying his wife killed a little boy and went to Cleveland. Less than two days later, May was found and taken into custody in Cleveland. Police found five-year-old Darnell Taylor in a sewage drain on Marsdale Avenue in Columbus. Now, today we spoke to both attorneys. They told us that no matter what, this will be a challenging case. Anguish that the family and the defendant and everybody that's involved in this case, the community, frankly, uh, is experiencing. Okay, so after all of that now, Pammy fell in jail. They interviewed the grandparents. The grandparents are so upset that they trusted Pammy, who had been a long-term friend, to watch their grandson, thinking she loved them, to actually be his legal guardian. And this is what happened to him. So the grandparents had an interview, and this is what they had to say. Just in disbelief right now, just. A family in shambles. Pammy. What you doing? A desperate plea from Darnell's biological grandparents, just hoping to get their grandson back. This is Darnell. You love him. Please bring him home. Anthony Baines says a friend called them early Wednesday morning, saying there was an Amber Alert for Darnell. I couldn't believe my ears. We didn't see this coming at all. Now, Anthony and his wife, Tawanda, say they feel partially to blame. See, it's, a, it's kind of our fault that Pammy got Darnell. The couple says they used to take care of Darnell, but it got to be too much for them. Darnell's kind of rough. We couldn't handle him. I hate to say we couldn't handle him. But we didn't want him in the system. So Anthony says they looked to their close friend who was like family, Pammy. Darnell's aunt, Quinesha King, says she's known Pammy since she was five years old. This is not like her at all, the person that I thought that I knew. King says her family hasn't seen Darnell since last July, not long after Pammy and her husband gained legal custody of him. The family says Pammy used to attend every birthday, cookout, and holiday, but out of nowhere, she stopped answering their calls. We've been out there to their homes knocking on the front door, the side door, no answer. We thought maybe she's keeping them from us so she can, he can be a part of their family first. But six months, what, that's a long time. With very few answers to their questions, their family is choosing to focus on the good, 
like that infectious smile they know and love. As you can see the pictures, he's something else. Their love for Darnell on full display. He has a bubbly personality. He's always smiling, always dancing. We just wanted to see him, spend time with him, love on him. As they continue to hope and pray for a positive outcome. Pammy, just bring him home. You guys come. Come on back wherever you wait. Okay, guys, let me know in the comment section below what you think about this video. I think justice was served for Darnell Taylor, and Pammy needs to stay right where she is for the rest of her life because you did the crime, you have to do the time. Let me know in the comment section below what you think about this story, and I'll catch you in the next one. Bye.